In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you a brand new Corset 2020 Commander deck tech that I'm going to be playtesting. It's Omnath, Locus of the Royal, with some Elemental Tribal and plus one plus one counters. As this is a preview untested deck tech, feel free to drop some comments and suggestions down below. Alright there, cheers for tuning in. So I'm Tim, here at the Digital Llama, channel all about Magic the Gathering. Specifically, casual singleton formats like Commander, Brawl, Oathbreaker and Cube. So before we get to the deck tech, we've got a quick little upkeep step. If you want to support the channel for free, please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and share the link with your friends or playgroup. And please remember to ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Another way to support the channel is by checking out my sponsor, Arcane Cards. They're an awesome online card shop, stocking MTG singles, sealed product and a great range of accessories. The link to the shop is down in the description as well as a discount code to get 10% off your first order. And with that said, let's head to the main phase. Omnath, Locus of the Royal is the third iteration of the Elemental we've had and this time he's added blue mana to the mix. For four mana we get a 3-3 who can smash something when it comes into play which is handy but it's the second ability that got me going. When a land comes into play we can put a plus one plus one counter on one of our Elementals including himself and if we've got eight lands we draw a card replacing the land drop. So I'm focusing on Elemental Tribal with some plus one plus one counter shenanigans and some interesting ways to get ETB triggers from lands. So naturally we'll start with the creatures. And first up is a guaranteed include Omnath's former self, the Locus of Rage. Landfall triggers are fantastic in this deck, just like the Grawl version. Making 5-5 five five Elementals is sweet and even when they die we're getting value. Grove Rumbler gets bigger with Landfall to become a 5-5 Trampler. Royal Elemental is a seriously fun card, stealing creatures from our opponents for as long as it stays in play. The Avenger of Zendikar is the classic Landfall creature, coming at you with its horde of plants. Embodiment of Fury has some great synergy with what's coming later in the deck, but on its own, turning our land drops into 3-3 Hasty Tramplers seems like a winner. Undergrowth Champion is the punching bag of the deck. It'll have a replenishing stock of counters to remove to soak up those attacks. Speaking of plus one plus one counters, Fertilid works wonders with Omnath. It's a repeatable basic land fetcher, as long as you keep topping it up with Omnath's ability. Stingmoggy also takes advantage of the counters, giving us repeatable artifact or land destruction. Nasty. Animas, Soul of Elements, is of course the long-standing king of the counters, so naturally finds a home in this deck. Forgotten Ancient is great at shuffling those counters around onto our other creatures, and Bloom Hulk gives us a one-off proliferate to bump the numbers up. Elemental good stuff now with Incandescent Soulstoke providing the Anthem effect and a Cheat Cards Out ability. Creeping Trailblazer is another anthem and can get scary big itself. The Banneret isn't an anthem but a very handy cost reducer and when combined with all the lands we should have can provide some great value turns. Soul of the Harvest and the classic Moldrifter give us some creature based card draw and Flamekin Harbinger is an elemental tutor. Grave Sifter lends some tribal graveyard recursions proceedings and Titania is just great fun, returning a land from the dead and making 5-3 token every time a land goes to the bin. So lands matter, and they matter a whole lot to Rubble Hulk, who gets more hench with each one we have. Risen Reef is fantastic at hitting those land drops and keeping momentum going. Living Twister is where things really start to get fun though. Being able to tap a forest and bounce it to our hand means we've always got a way to trigger Omnath and keep drawing those cards. Living Tsunami does a very similar thing, which is really powerful. Finally, for the Elementals, we've got Maelstrom Wanderer. No real reason other than that it's just plain cool. 
Other non-elementals in the deck include Rampaging Baloths, which has a great landfall trigger, but won't add much else to our synergy, unless we run Arcane Adaptation maybe. Evolution Sage will definitely help the deck to take off, and Springbloom Druid is an incredible creature-based fetch. Rakama generates crazy cheap 3-1 elementals, Eternal Witness does what it does best, and then Rattleclaw Mystic is the teamer mana dork of choice. And that leads us nicely into the instants, sorceries and enchantments. Cultivate, Explosive Vegetation and Animus Awakening all grab us some lands, while Splendid Reclamation brings them all back from the graveyard to the battlefield, more on why that might be needed later. Shared Summons lets us search for any two creatures we need at that point in time, then it's on to the destruction. Decimate, Blasphemous Act, Vandal Blast and Chaos Warp should all do the trick in their own ways. Trap Essence brings Counter Spell and even more plus one plus one counters with it, and Teema Charm is just great versatility, and Heroic Intervention keeps the Elemental Horde safe for a bit. You probably already guessed that Dublin Season would be in here, it just works perfectly, as does Hardened Scales, as we're mostly adding one counter at a time, so it's essentially a doubling effect too. Rhythm of the Wild is amazing. We can either get haste if we need it, or make sure every creature comes into play with a counter on it, ready to be proliferated. Hadana's Climb adds counters, but should just flip over the turn it comes into play, and that means we can smash in in the air for a lot of damage. Elemental Bond is some great on theme card draw, and Team of Ascendancy does the same, but for 4 power instead of 3. Artifacts are up next, so let's take a butchers. Crucible of Worlds is here to help keep our lands out of the graveyard, and Spellbook is definitely needed for the amount of cards we'll be drawing. Soul Ring and Chromatic Lantern are our mana rocks, and Solemn and the Heart are our basic land fetchers. We couldn't have a doubling season EDH deck without a few Planeswalkers. Chandra, Awakened Inferno is well cheeky. That emblem is hilarious, and the 3 damage to all non-elementals is where it's at. Her older ego is here too with Flamecaller. Upticking to make elemental tokens is a great way to help Omnath. Shaky Nissa is here to make our lands into 3-3 elementals, and this is why I'm worried about getting lands back from the graveyard. It does make our mana base susceptible to board wipes, until we can get her emblem. And the second Nissa of the deck is Vital Force. It turns a land into a temporary elemental, and the emblem gives us card draw on a landfall trigger. And speaking of lands, it's the mana base. Command Tower, Path of Ancestry and Mana Confluence all give us our three colours, as do Frontier Bivouac and Primal Beyond. The Path and Beyond obviously with restrictions. Three dual lands with the on-colour shock lands and three of the dual man lands. These things are a bit slow but do turn into elementals. Three on-colour fetches rounds out the standard part of the mana base. Teferi's Isle is a really fun bit of tech. It has phasing, meaning that it comes in and out of play for us, triggering Omnath on the regular. Thorin Glaciers is another blast from the past. We have to bounce it to fetch a basic into play, so every turn we get to trigger the commander. Khan's Bastion is a sweet recent addition to proliferate decks by proliferating. Alchemist's Refuge and Flankin Village both provide some great utility, just as Reliquary Tower and Strip Mine do. Then there's five islands, six mountains, and six forests to top it all up to 100. If you want to see the full deck list for this Omnath Commander deck tech, there's a link in the description to my Architect, which has all of my decks in it. And I'd love to chat about the list down in the comments, or over on my Discord, which patrons like these lovely folks get access to. I couldn't make these videos without their support or that of my sponsor, Arcane Cards. Please don't forget to check them out with that link that's down in the video description as well. If you'd like to see more Commander Deck Techs, there's a playlist of them right here. Or if you fancy something different, why not try this video? And before I disappear, don't forget to tap on the llama to subscribe, ready for new videos every Monday and Thursday. Catch you all on the next one. Cheers.